Hi there guys, it's Rick here and welcome to Rick's Guitar School. Um, today we have technique class and I'm going to be looking at controlling the fingers of the left hand and I'm going to talk a little bit about economy of motion when playing and it's specifically related to a private message I got from Garrett, absolutely fantastic guitar player and he asked me uh, with regard to my playing, uh, what I do that enables me to keep my fingers so close to the fretboard when I'm playing scales and in particular to do with a little finger, he seems to have a bit of an issue with that. Uh, doesn't sound like that mate, your playing's brilliant. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Firstly though, I want to uh, point you in the direction of my website www.rick-graham.co.uk Make sure you subscribe there. Um, because you'll get free exclusive access to lessons which will not be available anywhere else online. So make sure you head on over to my website. There's also uh, lots of free and purchasable downloads at my website, so make sure you check those out too. Okay, so let's take a look at today's lesson. Um, as I say before, it's to do with economy of movement for the left hand. Um, a lot of players tend to suffer from this, and I all, all the time I get questions from guys saying, you know, how come when you play it looks as though you're not doing much with the left hand? Um, a lot of that is kind of a byproduct of the way I've practiced, I guess. Um, but one of the most important things, and I'm going to start with this, um, is posture. I think posture has a massive impact, impact on your playing. Um, and Bad posture can create excess tension, and when there's excess tension involved in playing, a lot of problems can occur, including this kind of thing, uh, especially for the left hand. Um, so it's important to go back to basics and just check your posture, make sure you're sitting in a nice, comfortable position, uh, make sure you're not arching your back over, make sure you're not making any awkward movements that are causing excess tension and consequently making it more difficult for you to play. Um, I remember when I studied classical guitar, uh, I was pretty serious about it at one point and went off to study at a, a very, very good music school in London. Uh, the professor of guitar there, before I actually went, I took some lessons with him and the first lesson he said to me, right, I want you to change your posture, so I want you to spend the next week or two just sitting with the guitar, no playing. And yeah, it was, it was a bit hellish, but I'm glad he did it because it made me so self-aware of posture and breathing and everything else that it really affected my playing in a positive way. So it's worth going back to basics and just checking that out and uh, seeing whether there are any problems there. Um, the next step I'd like to talk about is to do with uh, uh, chord playing generally. It's not necessarily chord playing, but it's related to still uh, classical guitar playing. Um, what I used to do when I was playing classical guitar and studying classical guitar, I would obviously with classical guitar repertoire, it's about learning set pieces. And you spend ages practicing, you know, little sections of the tune, you know, bar by bar, and then, you know, pasting it all together to create a performance. And what I used to do was play uh, movements from one chord to, an, to the next really slowly so that I was controlling the movement of the left hand. Uh, just to give you an example here, I'm just going to play uh, four chords, G, D, E and C7. Uh, but I'm not actually going to play them, well I will to start with, uh, E and C7. Let me turn the tone up on my guitar. Okay, so those are our chords, and this is just an example here of what I used to do. I used to look at the movement for every single finger and try and minimize that movement when I went from one chord to the next. I wouldn't play the chord either, I would just hover above the frets and kind of find the shape, making the minimum movement possible to get the chord. That kind of thing. Uh, and that really, really helped me um, control uh, the fingers. If you look at just those last two chords, the E to C7, there's very little change in the movement of the left hand there when I go from that chord to... I mean, it's the same for all of the chords, it doesn't matter what chord you're playing. Um, the idea is that you're economical with the movement when you go from one chord to the next. Um, so I found that when I was studying classical guitar, by doing that, that sort of helped my left hand playing technique too. Again, all the posture issues, the excess tension, they were all already dealt with, um, which was great, you know? So 
it's worth looking at that you know keep it simple just use open chords basic triads and see if you can do that without any excess movement okay once that's in place then I would look at uh, actual scale playing um, so one point I'm gonna make here is a blindingly obvious point uh, but it is to keep your fingers close to the strings. It's as simple as that. When you play scales, don't make any excess movement. Uh, but the way that you can really control that is by playing super, super slow scales. You know, it's pointless blasting through scales at mega speed because you're just going to go back to the old way of playing, you know, which is not good. So we've got to control everything by playing really, really slowly. So if we took a scale, I don't know, A major. I would play the scale like that, uh, and I would concentrate on, on legato for now, because that's generally the best way I find to control the movement, um, excess movement of the left hand. Um, so, keep the fingers as close as you possibly can to the strings. You know, you don't need a huge movement to make the note to sound. You know, I'm getting the same effect there by just lifting the finger off slightly. Then, can you hear? There's no difference. So when you play the scales, try and keep your fingers as close as possible to the fingerboard. The other thing that I want to talk about is um, with which of the fingers you're using uh, the little finger in conjunction with. Um, because using your little finger with an index finger um, generally doesn't cause that, much pro that many problems. They work really, really well together. They're quite a strong combination. Uh, but when you use other fingers like the second and fourth, and third and fourth especially, things get a little bit more difficult. So these areas using the second finger and fourth finger, third finger and fourth finger should be practiced a lot. Um, so I recommend starting, let's say for example, you're on the seventh fret at the bottom E string, use your second finger and practice uh, hammering on and pulling off with your little finger. Again, making very little uh, no excess movement and keeping it the movement minimal anyway with the little finger. The other thing as well is pull downwards. That's, that helps to, to avoid excess movement. Can you see there when I'm pulling downwards it forces the fingers to um, keep the movement, you know, minimize the movement. And then you can do the same thing with your third finger and fourth. And make sure each note is as loud as the previous one. You've got to keep it nice and constant. Keep the rhythm uh, tight as well. You know, that's a really important aspect of this too. Um, okay, so hopefully that's given you some good ideas on how you can control uh, any of that excess movement there. Uh, so just to recap, look at your posture, look at your breathing, make sure that there's no excess tension anywhere. And um, once you've done that, try doing chords, try triads, you know, like I said before, try different chord combinations and see if you can move from one chord to the next with minimum movement, you know. Um, so the other thing is to keep as relaxed as possible. You know, you do not want any excess tension in the hands. And again, that's to do with posture. You know, if posture's in place, everything else should fall into place too. And scales, keep the fingers close to the left hand. Practice weaker combinations of fingers like second and fourth and third and fourth. Um, those will really, really help. So that's the end of the lesson. Just a quick reminder, make sure you head on over to my website, www.rick-graham.co.uk subscribe to the website and you can get free exclusive access to online lesson material. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I look forward to catching up with you guys for the next one very soon. Take it easy.